Hey, good afternoon. Today is January 12th, 2022. Today's topic, um, it's more of a homework assignment. This is part one of a two-part video called Seducing Spirits. That is a biblical term or a biblical phrase that the Apostle Paul used um, in, the, in the New Testament. Another way of saying that uh, is a doctrine of demons. Seducing spirits bring doctrines of demons. And it sounds scary because it is scary. Uh, uh, what it is, it's a, a demon uh, will come forward with a Christian sounding doctrine that is a lie. And it's designed to derail a Christian or shipwreck a Christian's faith. Another Shipwrecking one's faith is another biblical phrase. So if you've never used your Bible as a research tool, I encourage you to do that. Grab your concordance uh, or whatever Bible search app you have on your mobile device and I want you to study and look up the words doctrines of uh, um, seducing spirits. Look up that phrase in the Bible and read. You can read the whole book in the Bible, read the chapter in, ahead of it, the chapter after it. You need to be familiar, familiarize yourself with the context of that phrase, seducing spirits or doctrine of demons uh, because these things are very deceptive they've been around since Jesus's time you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sadducees they were a sect of religious leaders who did not believe in the resurrection from the dead uh, so you know they didn't believe in the resurrection so that that was uh, an unbiblical or a uh, view of the Old Testament that there was no resurrection in God so these these false doctrines have been around since the Garden of Eden and Satan presented the very first one saying <laughs> surely God did not say that's a doctrine of demons right there um, so they're still around today alive and well in the next video I'm gonna go into those but I want you to be very sober about this like the Apostle Paul he commended the Bereans um, it's a group of people who did not believe what the Apostle Paul said just because he said it they went back into the Torah into the Tanakh into the Old Testament is what I'm talking about and they studied the scriptures the prophets and they found out what the Apostle Paul was saying was accurate and then at that point they believed it so what we should be doing as Christians, we should be listening to the Holy Spirit through the filter of God's Word, the Bible, okay? So whether, it doesn't matter where you go to church, the, any pastor worth his salt would say the same thing. You need to go to the Word, the Word of God, the Bible, and have the Holy Spirit confirm or clarify what this pastor is saying whether it's right or wrong or if it's a seducing spirit and a doctrine of demons it's you can't blame your pastor on that last day of judgment day say well my pastor said nope that doesn't hold weight before the Lord uh, we are all responsible for what we do and don't do what we believe and what we don't believe we'll be held accountable so be like the Bereans do your research into what uh, we're gonna be talking about seducing spirits look it up in your Bible familiarize yourself with the context because believe it or not people want to be deceived <laughs> the Bible calls it people who have itching ears and there are many people who make a lot of money saying the things that itching ears want to hear uh, a great example of that is in the Old Testament the book of Jeremiah um, God gave Jeremiah uh, prophetic words about the, the direction God was leading Israel and then there were other prophets beside Jeremiah who were prophesying 
things that people wanted to hear. They things that they that they found comfort in, they found encouragement in. That's what they held on to. And the outcome was disaster. So people have itching ears. They want their ears to be itched with the things they want to hear what they want to hear. And they're going to go find someone to say the way they want to say it. So they feel comfortable and relaxed and okay. Rather than being in fellowship with the living God, hearing from the Holy Spirit on a daily basis through the filter of God's Word. So, I'm not going to say what, I'm only going to go over, I think, two of these um, doctrines of demons presented by seducing spirits. And baby, they are powerful. Um, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, in the last days, if possible, even the elect will be deceived. Now, if you don't think that's possible, then why Jesus say it? And then my second point is, go back to the Garden of Eden. Eve was deceived by Satan when she had zero sin character. She had zero sinful nature, and Satan was still able to deceive her. How much easier to deceive ourselves when we are sinful? We have a full-blown sinful nature. So, again, I'm repeating myself on purpose. Grab your concordance, grab the Bible, do your study, do your homework to show yourself approved on the Word of God, because we will all give an account to the Lord on this, on the words, seducing spirits, doctrine of demons. Um, have an understanding of what that is. Um, the reason Satan is doing this, it's absolute psychological warfare, man. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 says, put on the full armor of God. It's got a helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, um, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, um, and you've got your, uh, your belt and your shoes. And the, these are describing a Roman soldier going into battle. If you're not wearing that equipment, just like um, in Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, the closer Pilgrim got to the celestial city heaven, the more fierce Satan attacked him. And the only way he had victory over Apollyon was because of all the armor he was wearing. A seducing spirit is to get you to set down your shield, to set down your sword, take off your helmet and your breastplate of righteousness, your belt, loosen your belt, take it off and take off your shoes and just relax and take a nap. That is what the seducing seducing spirits want you to do as a Christian and render you impotent against the enemy's attack. And people can say, well, yeah, Jesus will protect me. That's true. Uh, Jesus has given us every blessing in heavenly realms. We are seated with Christ. That's what Ephesians chapter 1 says. Um, however, if we are not being diligent to show ourselves approved of the word, if we're not making every effort um, to uh, cause our election to be sure, that's one way of saying the Bible says it, or... Uh, Oh my goodness, I'm just blanking on all the verses that talks about it. Um, we just cannot be setting down our armor, and that's what the goal of a seducing spirit is. Is to get you to set down your armor, your shield, your sword, and take a nap. And then be overrun by Satan. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell. But it's a scary proposition when God commands us to be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect, to be holy as the Heavenly Father is holy, and then to go asleep in the light, to be a wise virgin and then be seduced by a seducing spirit and become a foolish virgin. So do your homework study upon what a seducing spirit is and what they do and what a doctrine of demons is and what it does and also about itching ears the Bible talks about all those things and then later on I'll upload a video seducing spirits part 2 alright thanks